Peekaboo Pattern Shop. Today I'm going to show you how to sew the classic necktie sewing pattern. You can get this pattern for free when you join my newsletter or Facebook group. I'll drop a link below the video so you can get your free pattern. If you'd rather not subscribe, the pattern is also available for just five bucks. It includes five sizes and your choice of either a skinny tie or a standard tie width. The first thing we need to do is cut out our pieces. I'm going to start with the outer fabric. So normally when you're cutting out pieces, you'll line up the grain line right parallel with the selvage edge of the fabric. But for this pattern, we're going to cut it on the bias. This gives the tie a really nice drape. It's just going to lay more nicely. But if you're using a directional print, like with this panda tie, then you can go ahead and cut it with the grain so that your pattern matches up and you don't have your pandas turned at you know a 45 degree angle. So one thing to keep in mind when you're cutting, if you're using a fun like novelty print, the area in between these dashed lines right here is the area that's gonna show on the finished tie. Anything along these edges is not gonna show when the tie's done. So if you're trying to get your pattern uh, placement perfect on your tie, make sure it's in between these lines. So to cut on the bias, you're gonna turn your piece at a 45 degree angle like this so that this line is now going horizontal across the piece. Your little edge up here at the top will be parallel to the selvage. So you're just gonna put it right like this and then cut it out. I have all my pieces cut now. I've got my outer front and back. I'm using quilting cotton for this particular tie. I have my inner lining, which I also cut these on the bias. So you can see they've got a bit of stretch. Those are cut um, from flannel. And then I have my front and back lining pieces, and that's what we're gonna to use to finish the edges on the tips of the tie. So we're ready to start with step one, which is marking the press and fold lines of our tie, and then getting those pressed. So on these dashed lines, we need to mark these on our front and back pieces. So the way I like to do this is to just fold my pattern piece right on the dashed lines and then lay it on top of my fabric and I mark one side at a time. So I'm going to get this all lined up and you'll want to use some pattern weights or something to hold it down and make sure it doesn't wiggle and then mark right along this edge and then we're going to use this as the guide of where to press. So you can do this on both sides for the front and the back piece. I just finished pressing the front and back of my tie. So here's my marked lines. I press these. Later on, that's the inner lining is going to go right in between these two lines. So now we're ready to finish the tips of the tie. So I'm starting with the front. Here's my front lining piece. You'll notice it is not the same size as your outer fabric. And that's the way it's supposed to be. This is what's going to create our metered corners. So you're going to flip this over so you have right sides of the fabric together and line it up on the side of the tie. And it's not going to come all the way down to the end, and that's fine. And pin this together, and then you're going to sew together right along this edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. The first edge is sewn, so now you're just going to pull the fabric over to line it up on the other side. And you're going to have extra fabric, which is fine. It's supposed to be that way. So it's going to pin. And you'll just fold this out of the way like that. So we're going to sew from this edge right up to where our stitching stops from the last step. So I'm going to start sewing on the side of my tie using the quarter inch seam allowance. And as I get closer to the tip, I'm just going to make sure those pieces are lined up and move this extra fabric out of the way. And I'm going to stop when I run into my other stitching line. So as I get close to the tip, 
I really slow down. You might even want to crank the last couple stitches by hand to make sure you get it just perfect. Okay, I just need to do one more stitch. I'm right at my stitching line from the other side, so now I'm gonna back stitch. So now that I've finished sewing the other side, see I have a seam here, a seam here, and then I have this extra fabric in the middle. This is what it looks like on the lining side. So now we're gonna fold it like this. So these diagonal edges line up and you're gonna sew right across this tip where your stitching line meet up, uh, where your stitching lines end. So I can see I have my seam right here, it ends right here, so I'm gonna sew straight across the tip right here. Now that the tip is sewn, it's time to turn it right side out and press it flat. I normally trim my seam allowance at the tip down just a little bit. You don't wanna to trim too much, especially if you're using fabric that frays easily or you might get a hole at the tip of the tie. So the first thing I do is press these seams towards the lining. And then I turn it right side out. And you'll probably need to use something to get this tip all the way turned. You know, a crochet hook or I'm just using the end of this little brush. We get that all the way turned and then press it flat. Now you can see your nice metered corners. And that way when the tie is being worn, you're not ever gonna see the edge of the lining because the outer fabric is wrapping around to the back side of the tie. So just give that a nice good press and then you're gonna repeat all these same steps for the back tip of the tie. I have the front and back finished, so now it's time to sew them together. And sew them together with right sides together. And your pieces are not gonna line up. Um, you know, they're not gonna look like this. They'll be at opposite angles, so line up the notches. And you're gonna have a little bit of extra fabric hanging off at each end. So line them up and then sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we'll just press that seam open and our tie will be in one long piece. My front and back pieces are sewn together. We can now cut off this little bit of extra seam allowance. Press the seam open. And now it's time to add the inner lining. So here's my front inner lining piece. I'm just gonna slide it down into the tip of my tie I find it's actually easiest to turn this inside out, get the tip right up at the tip of the tie, and then try and hold it there as I turn it right side out again. And then you're just gonna center the inner lining in between these lines that we marked in step one. And will just keep going all the way up the tie and then add the back inner lining piece. And it's gonna go on the other end. So we'll just get that tip down in there. Okay. In between our marked lines. Now your inner lining pieces are going to overlap a little bit. And you can hand sew them in place or you can just leave them just like that. They'll be fine. So once the inner lining's in, now you're going to press one edge of the tie over half an inch. This is going to give us a finished edge. So just press just like this all the way down the length of the tie. After pressing the long edge, now we're just going to repress along the lines that we already pressed in step one. So you'll just fold one edge over and then fold over the other edge that has this top edge finished, just like that. And now all the raw edges of the tie are finished. And you'll just keep pressing all the way down the tie. 
And then we're gonna add our little tie keeper right here and hand sew it shut. So before you start hand sewing, you gotta make sure the tip of your tie is symmetrical. So fold it in half, double check that everything lines up and that it's not wonky. Because if it's wonky now, those issues are not gonna magically go away. If you're having trouble getting it perfect, get your pattern piece back out and double check where your pressed line should be because that'll make sure that it's symmetrical. Make sure you've marked that right and that you're pressing right along those lines. You can also unfold this little edge right here, bring the pieces up, make sure it's centered, and then when you just bring them back down, you can kind of, you know, shift it and make sure it's, if you have this right in the middle lined up with your tip, these should naturally fall right where they need to to have a symmetrical uh, tip of your tie. So once you have this pressed perfectly just the way you want it, then you're just gonna hand sew it shut and you're done. We're ready to finish the tie using the slip stitch. And if you use matching thread, you can see it's pretty much invisible. I'm gonna use some nice contrasting thread to show you how to do this. So at the one end of the tie, you'll start with a bar tack by stitching back and forth a few times. You'll stitch down the whole tie and then finish with another bar tack on the other end. So to start your thread, you wanna hide your knot on the inside. So this is just my little sample. So just imagine this is your tie. You have your one pressed edge and your inner lining. I'm gonna bring your needle up right into this upper fold. And that way the knot will be hidden on the inside. And you're gonna stitch back and forth a few times. You wanna make sure you're grabbing the fabric and the inner lining. Now we'll hold the inner lining in place. Just don't stitch all the way through to the front side. So you can see my stitches aren't going all the way through. So go back and forth a few times. I'm just gonna do it three times, but you might wanna do a few more. And then you can continue up the tie. I'm gonna be sewing right to left, but if you prefer to go left to right, you can do that instead. So you're gonna take one tiny stitch on the lower portion of your tie, grabbing both the fabric and the inner lining. Then go right in at the press fold line and keep your needle in there for about half an inch. Bring it back out. So you just went through that upper layer. And then take one more tiny little stitch on the lower half, going through fabric and inner lining. Go in at the fold. Now if you're using this stitch to close up a pillow or something, you're gonna wanna make it smaller than half an inch. But on the tie, this really isn't like a pressure point or anything, so it's okay to take a bit larger stitches. So I went through for about half an inch, another tiny stitch. As you get more comfortable with this, you can kind of combine coming up from that tiny stitch with going into the fabric up top. So I'll show you that on the next stitch. So I'm gonna take my little stitch, and then when I bring my needle up, I'm gonna bring it right into the upper layer of fabric. So you can see, even with my contrasting thread, this stitch is pretty much invisible, so it's gonna give a really nice finish to your tie. So you'll just keep going all the way around and then finish with another bar tack at the end, and you're all done.